So this weekend a movie came out called The Social Network. I'm sure many of you saw it. It tells the story of how Facebook was created, how a college student named Mark Zuckerberg went on to create one of the most popular websites in the world with over 500 million users, and in the process became one of the richest, youngest men in the world. Now the question I want to pose today is how could we actually create the next Facebook here in Cincinnati? And do we have the right to contend with places like Silicon Valley, Boston, New York City, to be the heart of great startups that would come in the next uh, future. The thing is, Cincinnati is bursting with untapped entrepreneurial spirit. You know, the last speaker talked about the history of innovation that we have in different areas across our country and across the companies. The thing is, we have even more innovation than that, and we have even more opportunity. The fact is, when you look, we have a generation of college students right here in this city that are coming up with great ideas that have great learning environments in order to cultivate and build those ideas. Entrepreneur Magazine came out with a ranking, and it said, what is the best school for undergraduates to learn entrepreneurship? When you look at that list, you'd expect to see cities like Philadelphia, or New York, or Boston, or even San Francisco with schools dominating. But the thing is, Cincinnati had the most schools of any place in the country. We had three schools with Dayton, Xavier, and Miami University that were named as the best schools for undergrads. It wasn't San Fran, it wasn't Philadelphia, it wasn't New York. It's right here in Cincinnati. And build on that, you have a creative class here in Cincinnati that's unparalleled. If you look at this heat map, it shows what is the creative class and where are they most concentrated. Not surprisingly, you see cities like New York City up there, you see Washington DC and Baltimore, and you even see Atlanta. But if you look right in the middle of that map, you see Cincinnati. And it's because of the history of design that we have here, the musicians, the artists, the creative class, they're creating amazing, amazing things. And then finally, we have people that are out here doing it, people that are making a difference already. Just recently, Cincinnati was named as a hub of innovation for consumer marketing. We also have Cincinnati Innovates, in its second year gathering hundreds of ideas for people that have ideas and want to create innovation. And we have places like the brandery that I'm involved in, this helping support and bringing entrepreneurs to our city, including two that quit their jobs in Houston to move right here. So with that, this amazing potential that we have, how can we cultivate a startup culture? How could we create a world where the next Facebook actually might be in this room? It might be a young man or woman that has an idea and has a vision and just needs the oomph to get going, the support structure to do it. Why I'd argue is we have four things that we can do to help unleash this potential. The first is the last speaker talked about design, and UC DAP is an amazing school for design. But I'd push it further that we have a whole history of design here in this city, and design is at the heart of all great startups going forward. Why did Facebook succeed when MySpace stumbled? There's a lot of reasons you could go in, but I'd argue one of the biggest is that Facebook used design to solve a unique problem. In a land of simplicity, they answered something that a generation was looking for, of a simple answer to, and a place to communicate with their friends and engage with people. MySpace did it in a cluttered environment, and you'd argue that design was at the heart of what caused that. Second is we need to support our great marketers. When you think about any startup, if they have a great design, a great user experience, what comes next? Well, what comes next is finding a way to actually make people aware of what you're doing making them aware of what you have and what your business is about. I would argue that you won't find any city in America, if not the world, that has more marketers that are world-class leading than this city. And it's not just because of places like Procter & Gamble and the 5,000 marketers there. It's because of world-class agencies like Bridge Worldwide that won Alliance at Cannes last year. It's because of agencies like Landor and LPK. And it's because of other great brands that we have across this city that most people don't even realize. We're the home of places like Jurgens and Sunny Delight and US Playing Cards. It's a town of brand of great marketers. We need to leverage that for startups and bring it together and empower it. The third is we need to think of ideas that could be uniquely about Cincinnati and play to our strengths. This is a town that's the home of Kroger, the world's largest grocery store. It's a town that's the home of Macy's, the world's largest department store. How can we play up geolocation and mobile and all the trends that can directly relate to retail that could only be done in this city, in a city rich with our heritage of retail, 
and rich with our history of the data behind that retail. And then finally, how can we mentor our next generation? Entrepreneurship, the heart of it, is about helping the next class, helping people along, so it's not just about one idea, but a history of ideas. That's the thing that's made Silicon Valley work so well. You have a generation of entrepreneurs that go back 50 years that help the next and the next and the next. It's living out today with guys like Mark Andreessen, the founder of Netscape, that now one, runs one of the largest VCs in the Valley. He's there to mentor and to help. What is the mentorship we're gonna do in this city? How are we gonna help a generation take our business leaders today and mentor the next generation? The challenge I'd leave you with is that Cincinnati is a culture rich in ideation. We come up with ideas. But the fact of the matter is, there's millions of ideas out there. Well before Mark Zuckerberg came out with Facebook, there was Friendster, there was MySpace, there were plenty of ideas. But his challenge was he knew how to create. He knew how to take his vision and his goal and to create a startup that was about something. The challenge is what the world needs now is how do we stop ideating and actually start creating. Thank you. Thank you.